In a previous video, we took a look at the primary weapons featured in Days Gone, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the sidearms. However, I did somehow miss and or skip purchasing two of those previous weapons that were primaries. I'm going to show them off right here and then we'll get into the sound and comparisons for the sidearms. If you missed that previous video, you can find it in the video list as well as the coming video focusing on the special weapons. Now back to the two guns that I missed for the primaries. The first is the 22 repeater. Now this gun is just no fun whatsoever. Some of the other guns are a little slow and kind of out of pace when it comes to fighting the hordes but in different combinations with something else that has good damage and a, a big magazine and a high rate of fire you know mixing up the three different gun variations you can actually have some fun with some of the other slower more clunky weapons however with this 22 repeater it's just not fun and if you're not getting headshots it's just not a good gun it is one of those or at least it feels like one of those early weapons that adds to the incentive for you to level up and purchase a better primary weapon or take one off a dead body and here's how it sounds The next one is the Stinger, and I just completely missed purchasing this. And I have to say, although I don't hate it, it just doesn't feel special compared to some of the other guns. I'd probably pick a, a SWAT 10 over this, but who knows? Maybe I just need to use it a little bit more, but here's how it sounds. Now with the rest of the primaries out of the way, let's dive into the main feature, which are the sidearms. All the sidearms that you can get in Days Gone, starting with the basic bitch 9mm that you start with. Next, the SAP-9, but it's just a tiny bit better. Next up, you got the little stubby. Now, this is the only shotgun that you can have as a sidearm, and you can find it in multiple different conditions, being junk, poor condition, good condition. Next up, the SMP9, one of my personal favorites. It doesn't have a ton of damage, however, it has a high rate of fire, great accuracy, the thing just melts, and if you upgrade the clip, you can hold a ton of ammo. It's really called a magazine, but you gotta blame Hollywood for conditioning us to say a clip. Next up, Eliminator. Slow rate of fire, but it packs a punch. Just as long as you can handle that recoil. Next is the Mare. This thing 
hits and has some range. However, it doesn't hold a lot of shells, and it's actually a shotgun revolver, which I don't count it like a regular shotgun, like the little stumpy. However, I guess technically it counts. But as fun as this gun is to use, make sure you definitely have a backup. Because if a horde comes running around that corner, you're going to either shit your pants or pull out a better gun. Next is the Sheriff, and it feels, looks, and sounds similar to the Mayor, so this one's definitely down to preference. Sometimes I lean towards the Sheriff, sometimes the Mayor. But they both get the job done. And finally, one of my personal favorites, the PDW. Sometimes this gun feels like cheating with the smooth, almost non-existent recoil, the sexy sound. It doesn't do a lot of damage compared to some of the other heavy hitters. However, this gun will never let you down. All together now so you guys can hear the distinct sounds of each. I totally forgot there's also one final sidearm but you have to get this by searching every single Nero checkpoint finding the guys in the white Nero suits and then finding tech on them pieces of tech don't worry you just automatically collect those and it's in your inventory I think you have to do this 18 times and I can't remember exactly but you might actually have to complete the game or at least the the story mission part of the game but once you're done and you get all the pieces you just craft in your crafting wheel the stun gun this however is where we run into a number of glitches and bugs. Nothing game breaking, but some are rather annoying. We will go over the bugs and glitches, but let's just cover the stun gun and kind of the power and the ammo type and all that. Now real quick, yes, when you get all the tech pieces and you're ready to craft it, you simply go to your sidearm section and then you go up to the stun gun, craft it, and you're good to go. Now ammo, it doesn't take any ammo. As far as I can tell, it doesn't even need to recharge. When I I used it it said 60% one time and then 100% another time. I honestly don't know what that means because I was able to kill some freakers back to back without it needing to recharge so I'll be honest I have no clue what that means. However you have it on your person at all times but you can also carry a sidearm just like the game so it's it's like a bonus sidearm. You can fry freakers with it, you can fry, as a matter of fact you can fry pretty much anything with this. Oddly enough, the strongest type of freaker, which I thought was supposed to be 
the Reachers? Is it the Reachers? But it seems like the Breakers are actually the toughest ones to use the stun guns on. I use this stun gun on pretty much everything. Wolves, bears, all the different types of Freakers. The only thing I didn't successfully use the stun gun on was a Crow. I think that'd be funny. The Reachers are ones that, the ones that run really fast, they actually just ran like a bitch, to be honest. But if you get a lot of Freakers or Wolves or a lot of enemies in one area, even human enemies, you can fry them up, but if you get a lot in one area, you're bound to get smacked while you're shocking your enemy to death. Because it is a projectile, it shoots out, latches into your enemy, and then you have to hold down on the trigger to fry them up. Depending on how tough the enemy is, it's going to take a few seconds. The Breakers, they are the only ones that I've run into so far that will continue to attack you while they are being shocked. Everyone else pretty much stops them in their tracks. The Reacher has uh, ran away a couple times when I stunned them, but most of them, uh, it stops them in their tracks, and it'll shock them until they catch fire. Since we're talking about the stun gun, yes, there are some noticeable glitches and bugs with the stun gun. It feels like it's not something that was completely polished. It's a nice idea. I think it's a great little bonus, as a matter of fact. I absolutely loved getting a bunch of different bonuses for all the missions even when you're well done with the actual story mission but anyway it's a nice bonus to get this stun gun weapon it's nice however i'm constantly running into glitches where i can't attach a suppressor to my sidearm it's showing me uh, the different sidearm weapon maybe the weapon i had previously and it won't let me pick my sidearm while i'm in the survival wheel I often have to use the triangle button instead. What I'll have to do is uh, switch out the different weapons, maybe go to my locker, and then sometimes it'll actually uh, start functioning properly. It has glitched out to where it shot at an enemy and stuck where the enemy was. It looked like it stuck the enemy, but the enemy kept attacking me, kept moving forward, but my stun gun was just stunning the air as if it was attached to the enemy. A number of different bugs and glitches like this. Nothing that has got me killed. It might get me wounded once or twice, but nothing major. I am a bit bummed out about the fact that you always have to keep it in your survival wheel. It'd be nice to be able to take things from your person and put them in your locker. It'd be nice to just go out there with one gun if you wanted. Hey, maybe that's possible. I'm not sure, but I think... It would actually be really nice to have more customization with the weaponry in your locker. For example, I have three little stubbies. I would like to get rid of the ones in poor condition and keep the one that's actually in good condition. I think the way the game is designed and set up, it makes no sense that you would need multiple. They're not going to break. You don't need more than one. So when you get a better condition gun, it should replace the one that you had before. Same thing with the stun gun. It would be easier to just keep it in your locker. That way we don't have to worry about the glitches where it doesn't let us put a suppressor on our sidearm. Next, we'll take a look at the special weapons that you can carry along with you, but there's just so many small little things I want to highlight with this game because it's just friggin' awesome. I went around the map just uh, shooting random things in one of my recent gameplays, and I realized even if you shoot the stuffed animals, friggin' feathers explode out of the stuffed animals. It's insane. When you shoot metal, you get metal chips, you know, with a bullet hole with metal chips in the, the paint. Now, obviously, it's not going to be interactive with everything, but there's certain things in this map that just blow my mind one new thing i find every single time i play this freaking game this game is definitely worth higher reviews than it's getting i'm glad to see actual gamers say you know what forget the reviews i'm gonna give this game a shot and everyone i know is loving this game so like I said, we'll check out the specials after this, but if you have any other suggestions for different topics, put them down in the comment box. Alright, I'm done playing around, so it's your turn. 